see inductors. Now, the inductor, typical inductor in the market will look something like this. And we're going to use this. We're going to use this in a couple of our labs. Okay. Uh, most circuits will have an inductor like this in them, like radios, uh, radios, TVs, or whatever. And, uh, but it, the inductor could be even something big as this. Okay. All it is is basically a coil that's wound around. And inside of it, you can put an iron rod if you want. Okay, so you can make a, a inductor out of pretty much anything as long as it's a coil that's turned around, and uh, this is the same thing inside of it. But we don't really see the inside how they made it, but it pretty much should look something like that. So it's um, you know something like this, let's say. And its symbol is L. So usually in circuitry, when you see the inductor, it should look like something like with a little coil. Uh, with the capacitor circuitry, is like two, is like two plates. Even though not all capacitors are necessarily parallel plate capacitors, you can have cylindrical plates, spherical plate, any other kind of capacitor. But the, its circuitry, in the circuitry, its uh, symbol is like two parallel plates for capacitors. And then the resistor is like, like a wiggly line like this. Okay. Now, most inductors actually are also resistors, aren't they? Because what is a resistor anyway? Isn't a resistor just simply a wire and it resists the flow of electrons? So whether that wire is a straight wire or whether it's coiled, it doesn't matter. There, it should still have a resistance. So most inductors will also be resistors, but capacitors not necessarily. The capacitor is something different. The, the current doesn't flow through it. Okay. So what, I, what we want to first do is define the inductance of an inductor, show you why it's defined that way. And then we want to find out how do we, how do we find out the inductance uh, of an inductor. Okay, so first let's see its definition. So definition of inductance. So th this is its definition. So the, the inductance of an inductor, L, is defined as minus the EMF induced in a coil divided by the rate of change of the current in that coil. So if you, if you change the current in a certain coil, and the back EMF that it produces in that coil, if you take the ratio, that is defined as the inductance of an inductor. Now, let's compare it to the definition of a, resistance, of a resistor and the capacitance of a capacitor. Because now we can look at all three of them. Uh, in the capacitance was defined this way. It's the charge that you place on a uh, capacitor plate divided by the potential difference between those plates. And then the resistance was defined as The potential difference between the two ends of a resistor divided by the current in that resistor okay, is the resistance of that resistor. Okay? However, this is, this is uh, necessarily it's a definition, but it doesn't always apply to all uh, resistors. This applies for ohmic resistors, right? Then there's other kinds of resistors that uh, don't necessarily have a uh, linear relationship. But the resistance is defined as volts over current. Now, let's compare them. Resistance is volts over current, so volts over amps. And its, it's uh, symbol is ohms, right? This one is defined as coulombs per volt. And then this one is defined as volt per amp per second.
Okay? And then as far as units, the units of C is farads. And then the units of ohms, well, this is uh, ohms. We write it this way. And then the units of L is Henry's. Okay? So the H doesn't necessarily go with the L. The unit doesn't have the first same letter as the, the symbol itself. Okay? Now, do you remember back in chapter, uh, I believe it was 26 or something, I tried to explain to you why the C is defined Q over delta V versus R is delta V over I. It seems like they were opposites, right? And I tried to explain, well, because a good capacitor should be able to store, uh, with a certain amount of charge, it should be able to store a more voltage, okay? So a good, the higher the capacitance, then for a certain amount of charge, uh, I need less voltage to store the same charge, right? So the meaning of a good capacitor should be such that a small V can uh, still uh, store the same potential energy, the same uh, uh, voltage across it. So except for this one, the logic is backwards. Uh, the higher the voltage, the more current should be, right? So if the resistance is high, for a given delta V, for a given voltage difference, the current should be lower. Do you see? So a high resistance means it resists the flow of electrons. So if you put a certain voltage difference across the two ends of the wire, the current should be lower. So you see it's different. The definition is different, opposite. Now, which one does this one resemble more in terms of the the sequence of the, the thought process. This one is volts over amp per second. So the volts is on top. So it seems to resemble this one. Volts is on top. OK? So these two resemble each other. So, so why do you think they didn't do opposite of that, the definition? So let's try to see, again, try to make sense of the definition. Uh, an inductor which is, has a high inductance, it's a good inductor, should be such that uh, you could either, I guess, look at it two ways. For a given rate of change of current, it's going to produce a larger back EMF. So if this is a given number, this should be bigger. Okay? So that makes sense, right? The volts should be on top and the rate of change of current should be on the bottom. For a given rate of change of current, it creates a bigger back EMF. Or I could say this, for a given EMF voltage, I need less change of current to produce it. Right? I need less change of current to produce the same voltage difference across an inductor as a good, uh, uh, on a good inductor versus uh, for a bad inductor, I need a higher change of rate of current. So it seems like the, uh, the definition makes sense, why it's defined that way. So if we were to say how do resistors add up in series and parallel, resistors add up this way, right? And then parallel, it's the opposite formula. And then capacitors were opposite to that, right? And then series, the uh, parallel, the capacitors added up. So if you want to make a good capacitor, a stronger capacitor, put a bunch of them in parallel. Now, how should inductors add up? Based on, we don't even need to go through the whole derivation. Based on what I just told you, how should inductors add up? In series, they should add up simply just adding them. And in parallel, they add up opposite. So if I...